All right, you are tuned in to MMA Canada and very excited to be talking to an individual ahead of the UFC's next foray into Canada, which goes down November 2nd in Edmonton. And a bit of a switch in weight categories, which will be one of the things we get into as we chat as Brenson Hibero takes on Kayo Machado and great heaven Kayo on the MMA Canada platform. How are you doing, man? You having a solid day so far? Hey, Dylan. Uh, thanks for having me here. And yeah, I'm doing good. It's been a lot of changes right now. I just moved across the world. I'm back in Brazil. I had to change camps due to, the, due to that and also the change of weight. So it's a lot of new going on, but I think uh, uh, things are going well and I'm excited for this fight. Yeah, are you back in Presidente Prudenti? It sounds like you're out in that area. Yeah, yeah, that's my hometown. I grew up here, and a big part of the decision for moving was like being. I was away from family for so long while I was in Canada. I had a young, I have a young son, and it was just my wife and I, and I was traveling so much to the to training and competing that we needed some some extra help, and so we decided beside Vancouver, so expensive to live right now, so. We just decided to pack our things and and come here to Brazil to stay around my family. Yeah, no, that's cool, man. Brazil's a great place. I think we're kind of on opposite ends now because I think the last time we were talking, you were in Canada and I was in Brazil, and now it's like the exact opposite. Because I'm back in Canada for a bit. <laughs> I'm the like one right now. Besides, like it's very hot here, but I'm, <laughs> I'm happy to be in Brazil. Yeah, no, that's cool, man. I mean, it makes sense. Like I'd seen you'd had something a bit ago talking about how you were officially Canadian and everything like that. But I mean, I understand like even beyond the you know journey to get that citizenship, like, I mean, at the end of the day, like you said, I mean, you ultimately want to be around family if you can and stuff like that. So we're thinking, thinking Brazil for the foreseeable future, then kind of holding it down out there. Yeah. Like I just, as, as you said, I just got my citizenship last June. So Canada is always an open door for me. It's my, it's also my country right now. So I'm, I'm always have that door open and I'm, I'm glad I have that option right now. But for now, as I'm raising my child, I think Brazil, it's important to be, we are surrounding a little bit around family and that makes a lot of difference right now, especially with the young kid. So I think for the next couple of years should be around here. Yeah, no, for sure. Totally makes sense, man. And like you said, I feel like you have the support from both the Brazilian fans and the Canadian fans, too. And it seems like there's a bit of a BFL presence on this card. I was noticing just with Jamie Horth and Siri City also mm -hmm. previously yeah. being BFL champions fighting on this card. So that's kind of cool to see. Yeah, I think that's the all BFL, former BFL fighters in the UFC should, will be in that card, if I'm not wrong. If there's anyone else that fall for BFL that's still in the UFC for beside kids of course. But yeah, that's gonna be good. We're gonna be representing the the West Coast and specific, specific BFL over there. And I I'm excited to be in back in Canada car in a Canadian card doing my like officially official uh let's wanna I wanna say arena debut in Canadian soil in a kind of hometown like home home country sort of a fight then i'm excited for it yeah it's cool because i remember you were at ufc toronto in january more as like a cage side spectator so kind of cool to be closing out the year fighting in edmonton oh for sure and like i did my last two fights in the apex and i was really excited to get the arena energy going on and especially being canada uh, with all the crowd on my side, I already asked the UFC to be walking in with the Canadian uh, uh, uniform, the red shorts. I'm waiting on that, but that's what I want to do. I want to represent in the, the country that gave me so much, my family. And if I'm not there right now, I'm always going to be Canadian from now on. Yeah, absolutely, man. And I mean, that's obviously never going to change. But like I would kind of said in the intro, one thing that has kind of changed around is the weight category just with you going from heavyweight to light heavyweight now I mean this isn't really like uncommon per se because I remember ahead of I think it was your second fight with Lee me and you were talking about targeting a light heavyweight move or at least thinking about it 
but then that fight came up to you know defend the title and everything like that so i guess what did this training camp kind of look like as far as what you may have had to kind of change going to light heavyweight here uh so the the light heavyweight move has been something i've been talking since the first leaving fight i i always felt i was a little bit undersized at heavyweight i always been the lower end of the division and the quicker side of of the heavyweights so I've been even from BFL days. I was trying to get the cut, but there was no available light uh, heavyweight back in the day that could take the fights with the pandemic and the restrictions. So we had to stay a heavyweight, which pays off well. Coming to the UFC, but I always felt light heavyweight was the place for me. And uh, honestly. If you see my 2021, which was my best year, the two Liming fights and the uh, uh, Larson fight, I had I was all around two, uh, 225, 230 pounds on, on those fights. And that's when I was moving the best. But to be walk around that weight at the U, uh, UFC level, it's too much weight to uh, give up. So going to 205 was a decision. The camp has been great. Uh, the weight cut wasn't so hard to me so far. Um, I think right now I'm around 215, 220. So there's not much really left to cut. I've been feeling stronger. I've been feeling quicker, more explosive. I think like I always would love to adopt that my my toes a heavyweight and a short notice opportunity or something. But I'm thinking for title and division. Uh, contentions i think uh, a lot heavyweight the place it should be right now yeah like you feel like it would probably be your optimal weight division in a sense because like you said in some of your bigger performances you were a guy who had like i mean a decent level of size for sure like certainly not like a like a small heavyweight per se but you could still manage that cut to 205 so is this going to be the most like optimal that we've seen you so far almost do you think Hundred percent, but like as I say, small heavyweight. Like my best performance, my ideal weight is around two thirty, two thirty, two thirty, two twenty five, and I was doing, I was fighting around those at BFL. My best fights were around that weight, and but the last UFC fights, I tried to bulk up a little bit. I felt a little bit sluggish. Cardio wasn't the same, so I talked to the team here even before I decided to move to Brazil. I was talking to Coach Franco. And we were already talk- we were already talking about going to a five. Uh, I'm fe- I feel I have less weight to carry around, but more more strength. Uh, even lifting lifting more at the gym. So uh, overall, the cut's been good for me. It's starting to look better. My wife appreciates. <laughs> Yeah, I know for sure. I kind of hear that a little bit like, no, that's cool, man. It seems like you're in a great space. I guess I was just kind of even thinking of this and doing the prep for this interview, because one of the first times we were talking, it was like you were, you know, leading into, you know, having a child like your wife was expecting at that time. And I think I saw somewhat recently, like, I mean, recently, as in like a few months ago, you'd kind of celebrated a you know, a big birthday there and stuff like that. So just, yeah, kind of cool to see how things have kind of fallen into place with the family unit and stuff like that. I imagine that really, you know, rounds out your life and drives you a lot in several ways, I would think. 100%. Like my family is my driving force right now. Uh, They pretty much came all the way here uh, to Brazil because of me, because I needed that change. Uh, My wife's Canadian, so it wasn't her ideal scenario. Uh, her she had to give up a lot to be here with me but uh, like having that in all my corner especially my wife Gabby giving backing me up all that with all my fighting all my decisions I think I couldn't do that with without her without them here and I always will fight to give them a better life better opportunities and uh, to show my kid that I I'm doing what I love and I to sitting on doing that so go for it buddy yeah for sure a great example no doubt and you'd kind of mentioned before some of the I guess Canadian centric work you had gotten previously and stuff like that it seemed like from what I was gleaning from the social media there that inside Muay Thai was one of the spaces you were fairly active at like where are you mostly training in Brazil as of late 
So I'm inside Muay Thai, more specific for uh, head coach Wu Wong Salves. That's the, the place I came from here. I used to train, bef even before I moved to Canada, I used to train with Hugo and uh, ma uh, Master Marcio Mendes on BJJ. So uh, always, I'm always, since, since every time I came into Brazil on vacation or on what, for whatever reason, I always was training with those guys. They always been together with me. So, I've been to some of the camps, they came to mine. So it, it's always been a very close relationship. So when they moved to Brazil, uh, came around, there was a no brainer situation. Uh, I still like have a lot of thank for to coach uh, Chris Franco that came all the way to the journey with me. Like we, we work a lot together and was like, honestly, the toughest decision of my, my life to to change camps and say goodbye to to Franco, but and but I knew like I had to be around family. I had to to just move for for them right now, and uh, I'm feeling good here. But hope I, I'm working out also to have Coach Franco uh, as a corner man on the fight. So it would be good to have him around, have see see all the friends at FKP MMA if they can make to a mountain so i'm just excited to be here and have this such great team back home in canada that i can also work with yeah no it's a great spot to be in in that sense like you said still have the strong connections to the canadian space but also fighting a fellow brazilian mixed martial artist here like i guess what was your level of awareness to your opponent because i mean kind of similar arcs in a certain regard like looking to find that traction in the ufc after an impressive win on contender series and from also what i was seeing he's like fought on that shooto brazil circuit and you know the like fighting on the you know chris cyborg promotion that she has and a few other leagues like m1 as well from what i'm peeping on the old topology page here like i guess what was the level of awareness with brinson hibero before this bout was signed and i guess what have you picked up from him like doing the tape study and things of that nature i i didn't didn't know much about brinson uh before the fight got before they called me about the fight but i since then since then my team and i did a little a lot of study on him a lot of tape that He's a strong guy. He, he comes aggressive. He's a very lanky fighter that has really good hand work. Uh, but I think, but I think the biggest advantage for me right now is I'm coming from a. I be I used to get hit and hit 260, 270 pound guys. Uh, I don't think I think when I feel like the light heavyweight punch will be way different for me, and when he. Feel, feel the punch in my hand will be full heavyweight strength. That's interesting because I was seeing like a clip from a recent interview that you had done where you sort of touched on a similar topic. Like you were going over your last fight against Dontel Mays and everything like that, where you were saying you were landing some, you know, really good shots on him and everything like that, but he could kind of like wear it fairly well. Whereas like there was a certain defined difference you noticed when he was connecting with his strikes on you so yeah it seems like there would be like more of that comparable body type dynamic and stuff like that with this one 100 percent. like uh, as i said in the other interview the the fight with maze showed me a lot of the size different maze was cutting to 205 to 265 he was probably around 275 i want to say five day bigger guy I, I hit him way more i tr i did a lot of combinations but I feel he's seven on phase. And the second I made one, I made one mistake in the entire fight, in my opinion. And that's when he dropped me and that cost me the fight. So I think the difference in weight and punching power will be there. Of course, being in a lower division, there's the speed going on. But I think uh, that punching power, that weight difference was the biggest problem for me on the last couple of fights. Same thing with... Um, uh, fuck, I go now. I forgot his sorry, I forgot his name right now. Uh, the guy that fought the first time, uh, who was that, Mick Parker? Mm -hmm. I think, Mick or Mark Parker, yeah, Par yeah, parking. Uh, I was really hard, like, I was able to throw him off the ground, like, move him away, get out, get from, get out from under him, but that took a lot of energy from me, and that. And that cost me on the third round when I needed to push the pace. I had no more arms to 
to go for it even like the fight was very even just from keep trying to move him away from me cost me like a lot of energy so i think 205 extra energy i myself more explosive carrying more carrying less weight more like strength it raw strength a little bit less body fat i think that's going to be a deal for me right now yeah, because it seemed like your takeaway from that fight, and I mean, like you'd even said to a degree, the debut against Mick Parkin, like, it seemed like the size and that component, like just how much energy, I guess, expenditure there can be fighting someone who's of that size and even just trying to keep them off of you. But even more specifically with the Maze fight, Wiki, we're talking about that, not in this interview, but the one I'd referenced before that you felt like you had done enough to win the second and third, but really the fight was in a way largely kind of decided by just a single moment where you, I don't know, like overextend or however you want to phrase that and then get caught and it ends up costing you the fight. I guess that's kind of the dynamic with heavyweight fighting sometimes and so many mm -hmm. fights you can kind of see that in like the one guy can quote unquote be perfect and have all the traction going for certain amount of time but it just takes one slightly off moment for the other guy to capitalize yeah no like i they re i rewatched that fight many times especially the maze fight and i still think i had i did enough to work second and third but on the first is where things change a little bit i was i found i found took me a little bit but i found the distance i was uh tagging him more often i was being aggressive and i overextend a little bit i got a little bit too close he he caught me with an overhand that i didn't see coming it fell on my my butt and that's when the he won the round and even and i believe if i didn't got that knockdown i would win that round and win win the fight and my head would be three and three rounds to zero but even if without that and the thinking as the judges I think would be two and one for me with all that knockdown. So I definitely feel the the size and the and the weight play a part on the those on that fight. And I'm excited to see how the light heavyweight gonna play out for me. Yeah, for sure. And I've talked to Canadian fighters and whatnot about just the fact that some of these newer rules are coming into the picture with this event, just with the newly amended unified rules of mixed martial arts being utilized on this card and this being the first time ufc has gone to do a card with like the difference in you know what constitutes a downed opponent and the use of 12 to 6 elbows like is this something that you've been thinking about a bit or factoring into your preparations because i've also talked to some fighters where they're like yeah i don't really know how many like big opportunities you would have for like the 12 to 6 elbows and stuff like that which is i guess just to say that maybe those fighters didn't really think there would even be a great I deal of difference yeah especially like the denise the ground opponent and, and throwing the knees that that would be a big difference that that that's something could be useful could be useful i have powerful knees that you want a lot of especially in my early fights as with knee strikes but the 12 to 6 elbow i don't really see that that much powerful and then then causing that much damage and even like the angles i'm very lanky and with on my torso so i feel even awkward to throw off of off some positions i i think the knees will be great for using but the the, the 12 to 6 elbow is just i don't really understand why i was there in the first place yeah and yeah, I mean, I don't know. It just doesn't really seem like it's a great deal different than a lot of other strikes. Like, it's not like it's this, like, dangerous sort of technique per se. But, yeah, no, I guess I just thought to ask, like, in case maybe you were, I guess, preparing, I guess, differently in terms of, like, what you would do offensively or even, I guess, things to be considerate of on a defensive level if you happen to be in any of those kind of positions. But, yeah. Again, the, the, with the knees, yes, you got to be aware and to throw and to receive. But the 12 to 6 elbows is so awkward to set up those elbows and get into the position with those. And the damage they cause, it's not that even much bigger. Where, oh, I would prepare to, to work with those elbows because now they're illegal. I just... Is the technicality that gonna, they gave Jones the extra win or will or whatever... But for overall MMA, that will cause very little changes. Yeah, that seems to be the general sentiment that I've gotten from a lot of people 
that I have kind of spoken to on the matter and whatnot. I guess another thing that I was noticing on that I'd be curious to get some insights on. I mean, I don't know how much you're even able to divulge of it, but just your involvement with the Smashing Machine and your role in that movie. Like, how much are you able to, I guess, get into about that? Because I know sometimes they do like certain NDAs and you want to keep things under wraps while it's still in production. But I guess just how did all of that kind of come about? Yeah, I have a couple of NDAs I can really talk about, about like my part and what was done and how the moves looked like. From what I've seen, a couple of scenes, I'm excited to to watch this move. The the team, the director, and all the production is really was we're really excited about working with fighters. Focus on the focusing on the fighting scenes and how realistic everything will look like. So I'm really excited to see that on the big screen. Uh, the participation came in a weird way because I saw the ad for the open calls online and a friend the friend sent me, but I was like in the middle of the fight camp to maze. It really didn't uh, focus on that. But my coach at the time, Chris Franco, he knew the stunt director from working in the movie industry in Vancouver, and he. He asked Franco if I had, he had a couple big guys. He gave my name, my credentials, and that's and they kind of always had that over there. So I think it was one day or two days before that line, I got a call from him and say, "Hey, we we heard we we have your file here, but we never really got your your application. Can you send so we can put you on on review?" The next day, they they already called me with a part to be Pete Williams, and it's gonna be a small part, but I'm excited to for the experience and how the move gonna come out. It's something different, so I just wanna. I'm just happy to be, I was part of it. Yeah, no, really cool stuff, man. I feel like that's been one of the fun parts of just that particular project just seeing some of the names they've you know announced for some different roles like i think like ryan bader is involved obviously dwayne the rock johnson being like such a big hollywood star is involved so yeah no just cool to see man glad that you kind of got that experience like was it kind of i guess like what you figured it would be heading into it just like the whole being on set and just everything that goes along with making a film relative to what your role in it was it's a little more waiting than uh, I was expecting. Uh, yeah. Filming uh, is a process, but overall, I can't talk too much. But that was a, I was expecting a little bit bigger of a role than it uh, end up happening. But I understand the move has to to do some cuts and some adjustments as production goes. But I'm I'm just overall excited to be part of that experience to be able to shoot with to be part of that big of a project and shoot with biggest big stars like i got be able to to sh- to be with the rock and shoot with him and that's that's pretty cool yeah did you get to like meet the rock like or anything like that like just not even like in the body of what we might see in the movie because i don't want to get you in trouble but was there even like some offset or just general interactions with the rock mm-hmm. that were had we, i did a scene with him that's how he wasn't the scene we were in a scene together but uh, he's pretty much uh, on his not doing his own thing off off scene. He pretty much uh, as we we he, he show up to rehearsal and and shoot and as as the director says cut and we it's a wrap. He's kids disappear. He's gone. Like I he's a busy guy. He's a big star. I'm like I wasn't expecting to be buddies with him, but overall it was a good experience for me. Yeah, no, fair enough, man. Just so cool to see all these different things you have on the go. But chief among them is this next fight. And just, yeah, cool to see all of this action in Canada. Like, it seems like UFC is kind of prioritizing the Canadian market a little more again and stuff like that. And so, yeah, just love to see that, man. I guess just, you know, being mindful of your time and what you're getting up to the rest of the day. I you know, figured to put the ball in your court and see if maybe there was a final parting thought you were wanting to add as we're kind of wrapping things up here, though, Kyle. Yeah, I just want to thank you for for the call and for the interview. It's always a pleasure. And I want to just uh, thank everyone in Canada and especially Vancouver for all those years. I it's being a cheering over there, and even I'm not there present right now, I always take uh, Vancouver and Canada in my heart, and I'm so excited to represent in Canada in Canadian soil in the UFC. It's 
is a freaking honor for me and I'm excited for that. And I'm really excited to bring this one home in Canadian soil. Yeah, it's just cool. It'll be interesting to see you at light heavyweight. Like I said, this is something that you've kind of even talked to me about for a while now. So what cool to see all of that come to fruition. And just, yeah, man, super stoked to see this UFC Edmonton card. I'll be tuning in on November 2nd. But yeah, thanks so much for coming on the MMA Canada platform. And you have a good rest of your day there, Kayo. And yeah, thanks so much, man. My pleasure. Thanks for having me and talk to you soon.